you guys, so a guy called Sandy reached out to me and wanted me to try out his product that he created. I was like, okay, I'm all for that. I later realized he created something way smaller than a typical full-size keyboard we're used to. Smaller than a 40%? Yup, it's small and cute. It's the dump pad. I was shocked because I had no clue what a dump pad was. I thought that it was a numpad for people to use for numbers and stuff. Why would people have them when they already have keyboards, right? But there's actually more to this dump pad than what meets the eye. It's small, yes, but it definitely packs a punch in terms of design and programmability. What I mean by this is that a dump pad is not your usual full-size keyboard with 104 total dedicated keys, and I don't think it is a keyboard to begin with. I would like to describe it as an extension of a keyboard. It's basically a macro pad where the keys can be macros. Simply put, macros are just input sequences that are recorded via software and can be activated by only one press of a button. Remember those keys that you always happen to use, Control c Control v What if we had dedicated keys for those, instead of pressing those two buttons all the time? Okay, those are easy, but what if it involves a combination of keys and strings, like Alt, Tab, Tab, Tab when switching application? Imagine minimizing it to one key press. It would be heaps better that way. What if you want to open one app on your computer with one click of a button? Yep, also possible. Coming from someone who's never used this before, gotta say, it's really cool to have one. So, the SVT dump pad has finally arrived and now, time to unbox it. This is so cool! <sighs> Okay, let's look at this. <gasps> wow. Oh my god. This. Oh yeah. Oh, it's the back. Okay, the exciting part, building it. I'm peeling off all the protective cover of all the acrylic layers and it's kind of fun. Though I got too excited with this, not sure why. By the way, this product will come already pre-assembled and pre-soldered, but I thought it would be fun for me to assemble it myself. So what I'm showing you is not how the product actually is. I just wanted to try soldering it myself, but if you happen to buy this, no worries. It will already come assembled and soldered. So these acrylic layers will be later used for the exterior of the dump pad. And I needed to have a cloth nearby to wipe away any dust or prevent unnecessary scratches. Looking good. Okay, I'm taking this column standoff support to screw and mount the PCB later. Then I take a small M3 size hex nut and tightening it on the standoff. By the way, to tighten it, I used a 5.5mm hexagon nut driver. I continue to do that for the rest of the four corners, making sure it's properly tightened. Okay, now let's move on to the soldering. The solder wire I'm using is a 6040 kind, with a thickness of 0.8mm. For your information, I'm nowhere near an expert at soldering. Since I'm a beginner, these SMD components were very unfamiliar to me, but thankfully it seemed to turn out fine. I think, but honestly speaking, if you're a beginner too and want to try soldering, do know that you are taking a risk of damaging your precious PCB. But having the right tools, expert advice, or good practice is key to prevent making soldering mistakes. As for the rotary encoder, the soldering is similar to soldering key switches, which is kinda easy. By the way, if you're curious on how Stanley himself built his product by scratch, check out his Facebook page called SVT Maker and his blog. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so now that we're done here, this is how it looks like with the rotary encoder. So now we can finally assemble the case. I have already mounted the PCB. I take half of the acrylic layers and stacking it on top surrounding the PCB. Now I'm putting the plate on top of the PCB. 
The plate allows it to be more stable and sturdier. I then put the rest of the layers on top. Afterwards, screwing on the M3 nut tightly on the bottom of all four sides. Yay, so we got ourselves a small SVT dump pad, but we're not done yet. Next up is to put on the rotary knob on the rotary encoder. So this little knob has a notch inside of it that requires the screw inside of it to be tightened so that it will stay attached and fit nicely on the rotary encoder. So I'm taking a tiny, tiny screw to tighten it up. Now we have a proper rotary encoder with the knob. Great. Now's the time to decide what key switches to put on. Well, there's a lot to choose from, but for this thumb pad, I wanted to go insane for the switches and just add random types of key switches just for the fun of it. From cherries, gaterons, the kales, otomus, SP star, you name it, they're all here to have fun. I think it's nice to make use of my key switch collection and putting it all on a cute thumb pad. So if you're wondering what these switches are, I'll put a list of them here in order. Oh yes, we've reached the best part, adding the keycaps. So what I have here are just some random keycaps that I cherry picked to go on the dump pad. Wasn't so sure what I was going for, but decided to spell out the name SVT dump pad instead. <laughs> okay, by the way, yep, I'm mixing all the different keycap profiles together. Since it's gonna be a fun dump pad, so might as well jumble up the keycaps and add different keycap profiles together. I mean, why not, right? All that's left is to add the last bottom layer that has the bumper stickers already attached to it. And then, we're done! Okay, after three weeks of using this thing, I have to admit it was a definite thrill to use it, which I did not expect coming from this small, cute thing. So I listed down three things what I like about it. First being is that it's hot stoppable and has a rotary encoder. Second, it's programmability. And third, it's beautiful underglow RGB lights. Okay, what is a rotary encoder you ask? Well, rotary encoder is a position sensor that is used to determine the angular position of the rotating shaft. Whenever it rotates, it sends an electrical signal to the computer. In this dump pad, there is a LED light signaling the rotation of the shaft. Just like this. For example, when I press on it, it pauses and plays. When I rotate it to the left, it increases the volume. And when I rotate it to the right, it decreases the volume. You can also do this for page up and page down too. Oh, did I mention it's hot swappable too? It is nice to have that option since I can just switch up whatever key switch I prefer, choosing my own typing experience. Hi guys, it's Jessie and I here. And another thing I wanna say that I really like about this dump pad is that it is fully programmable, which means that you don't only have to use it for numbers, you can use it for a lot of things because it's QMK compatible. QMK is an open source keyboard firmware that allows anyone to have access to it, to customize their layout, download the firmware, then flash it. So to be honest, I did have to spend some time coding this key map and have certain buttons work as intended. But no worries, this dump pad already comes with a pre-flashed default key map, so no programming required whatsoever. But let's say if you really want to tinker with programming, here are some other stuff you can do apart from the default key map. So I have a total of four layers on this dump pad. The first layer being layer zero, the base layer. This layer has all the numbers and operator signs. To access this layer, I tap one time. This will be the first layer shown when plugged in the computer. To access the second layer, layer one, I tap two times. This is the RGB layer that has all the RGB light controls. 
For the third layer, layer 2, I tap three times. This has all my media keys to control my Spotify music and Zoom meeting controls. Now, in the fourth layer, layer 3, I tap four times. This is the layer I added for fun and has my emoticons and git commands for programming. For example, this is a table flip frustrated emoji, a must, smirky face, the oh my god I'm in trouble face, the surprise face. I also use it for Zoom meeting controls which is perfect because I'm always fumbling to find the mute and share video buttons, the M for unmute and mute, B for toggling the sharing video. But make sure to enable global shortcuts in Zoom settings so that you can use it outside of the application too. Ah, the most stunning part about this dump pad that I admire is its sweet RGB angle. I think the acrylic layer case goes really well with it, making it brighter than ever. It excites me when I get to play through its many RGB effects. Plus, it makes an outstanding bright piece on your desk. You can get to control the hue, light effect, brightness, and many more. You can also check out the many light effects QMK can offer. I like the look of the layered sides because it allows the light to diffuse nicely, making it have this nice, soft, light glow. It's just mesmerizing. To recap, I listed down all the features of the dump pad here. You can pause to take a look at it closer. Now, the big question here is, should you actually get one? Well, to answer that, it really does depend on your use case. If you use a lot of numbers and data entry on spreadsheets, this would be perfect for you. But for those that don't really use numbers, no worries, because this cute little guy can do so much more. Here are the list of examples on what you can use it for. Personally, I use it for my Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Illustrator shortcuts to redo something or to control the timeline of the video. And I also use it for programming to type certain Git commands. I mean, the possibilities are endless here. And if you have a favorite app software that you use on your computer, it probably has some shortcuts available on their site that you can then refer to and map it to your dump pad. Awesome, right? Yes, there are slight cons like the USB-C to micro USB adapter that it comes with sometimes come out when detaching it, which requires some fiddling to put it back in. And there is an extra bottom layer that has a rubber stopper which is not fully attached to it. Sometimes when I want to pick it up, it falls off from it, making me forget that it was there in the first place. But the pros definitely overweigh the minor cons and this is surely a worthy dump pad to have. Plus, even my pet gecko loves it. He's just chilling there for some reason. By the way, he's blind. Did I mention it's very customizable? This dump pad does not come with keycaps and key switches, so you may have to buy it separately. But this gives all the more reason to have it look to your liking. Anyone can have a dump pad and do a certain thing and get the job done, but does it look good and unique while you do it? Having your own colorful set of keycaps and the ability to control your typing experience makes it a personal device to you and to you only. It will absolutely help personalize your desk setup and did I mention it acts like a cool colorful RGB night lamp too? I'm still not sure why it's called dumb though, but it's definitely bright, cute, small and got a lot to offer. It's the SVT Dump Pad.